For the first time in history, a sail wind mill let the wind pass through the sail, but it extracts all the wind energy. Here, the sails may pop out by one meter from the front and one meter from the back, creating two meters of empty space for the wind to move dynamically between the sails. This creative design will provide an ample space for the wind to move forward either from the top, bottom, or sides of the sail. The net result is a frame with a huge surface area blocking the wind, and yet the wind can freely and dynamically pass through it. The BSW can be as short as 20 meters or as tall as 70 meters. A massive BSW with 40 meter by 40 meter spinning frames can be deployed in wind farms, while a medium size can power large hospitals and universities. Micro BSWs are ideal for powering homes. The spinning frames can range from 10 meter by 10 meter up to 40 meter by 40 meter. The most striking feature of the BSW is its dynamic design. The BSW has no complicated moving parts, no sensors, no computer controlled mechanism to shift the three rotors to where the wind is high, and certainly no nacelle 70 meters above the ground where a helicopter is needed to reach the generator when it breaks down. In fact, the BSW has the absolute minimum number of moving parts in comparison with any commercial wind turbine. Its only moving parts are the sails. Compare the BSW's minimalist design with this huge German wind turbine. This horizontally spinning wind turbine has several moving parts. All moving parts are enclosed inside an cell. The parts are expensive and controlled by a complex mechanism. They require expensive maintenance and cost enormous amount of money to replace or repair. When any of these expensive parts break down, the time needed to replace them will be long and costly. So what are these expensive and complex parts? A yawning mechanism consisting of four big motors to rotate a hundred ton nacelle with its three rotating blades. Three blade tilting mechanism motors, one motor for each blade, a gearbox, a braking system, an electromechanical starter mechanism. All the parts mentioned above are adjusted by wind velocity sensors and wind direction sensors and electronic controllers. The BSW does not require any of those parts. However, this rotation cannot be directly coupled to a generator because the wind turbine blades typically turn at a very low rate of RPM due to the issues of the noise and mechanical strength. Considering this slow speed rotation, we cannot produce any meaningful electricity frequency from the generator. So, before connecting to the generator, the speed is increased in a gearbox. The gearbox uses a planetary gear set arrangement to achieve the high speed ratio. A brake also sits in the nacelle. The function of the brake is to arrest wind blade rotation during excessively windy conditions. Consequently, the electricity that is produced is transferred through the cables towards the base where a step-up transformer is situated. The wind turbine should face the wind normally for maximum power extraction. But, the wind direction can change at any time. A velocity sensor fitted on the top of the nacelle measures the wind speed and direction. The deviation in the wind's direction is sent to an electronic controller, which in turn sends an appropriate signal to the yawing mechanism to correct the error. You can see how the yaw motors turn the nacelle. Thus, the wind turbine will always be aligned with the wind direction. According to the wind speed, the relative velocity angle of the wind also changes. A blade tilting mechanism tilts the blades and guarantees a proper alignment of the blades with the relative velocity. 
Thus, the blades are always at the optimum angle of attack with the relative wind flow. The sails of the BSW move one quarter turn every circle. This minimal movement of the sails will dramatically reduce wear and tear and extend the life of the BSW for more than 30 years without the need for maintenance. The green swinging window is motionless all the time, except when the wind reaches powerful level. It is the BSW's built-in safety mechanism designed to spring immediately into action when wind speed reaches an extreme level. One of the most radical features of the BSW is the location of the generator. The generator is placed two meters above ground level. By placing it so close to the ground, all electrical components and wirings will also be in one place. Inspection, maintenance, and repair becomes easily accessible, inexpensive, and reduces downtime to the absolute minimum. A long hollow shaft connects the generator to the rotating assembly at the top. The BSW central ball bearings is already bearing the pressure of 10 tons of weight. Adding an extra half a ton pipe will be an easy task. A linear BSW with 20 meter by 20 meter spinning frames may weigh 15 tons, while the helical version may weigh 16 tons. A BSW with 40 meter by 40 meter spinning frames will naturally be much heavier compelling us to use multi-ball bearings to extend the longevity of the ball bearings. The helical version will be slightly more expensive than the linear one, but just as easy to assemble. And instead of two days, perhaps it will take three days to construct. But when mass produced, the difference in production cost between the two types will be 5% only. In this animation, the connectors tying up the frames may look as if they are made of steel. In fact, they are made of strong wires. In addition to anchoring the BSW into the ground, the BSW's built-in safety mechanism will ensure its survival, even in powerful storms. As the wind gets stronger and stronger, the moving flaps get pushed higher and higher, thus allowing more and more air to freely pass through the widening gaps. One of the most distinctive features of the BSW is how easy it is to start spinning. Mm. Unlike other heavy wind turbines used in wind farms, the BSW does not require a complex electromechanical system to help it to start spinning. A wind speed of two meters per second is sufficient to make it spin to produce power. While current heavy commercial wind turbines won't start spinning unless wind speed exceeds four meters per second. An electromechanical starter mechanism is usually incorporated into these colossal wind turbines because without them, the rotors will stay motionless. Given its modular nature, a BSW can be packed and transported by one truck and assembled by semi-skilled workers. The BSW's dynamic design, lightweight and minimum moving parts will not only guarantee its longevity, but will ensure the production of an enormous amount of power output for several decades. This is the blinking sail windmill, a revolutionary wind turbine designed to produce a huge amount of power. It is inexpensive to construct and easy to deploy. Comparing oranges with oranges, the price tag of a BSW is one quarter of current commercial wind turbines. The BSW has the largest surface area than all wind turbines worldwide. Its huge spinning frames block the wind and convert it to power. The BSW can assume many shapes. In this configuration, the spinning frames are linear and spin as one solid massive sail. The linear frame can be designed in many forms. It can consist of double-sided units seen here as a blue box. Mm. Here, all the sails are at the same distances from the blue box, thus forming a single flat layer blocking the wind. The sails can also be at different distances from the blue box. In this case, when the wind strikes each frame, the wind can move in four different directions, either from both sides of the frame, as well as the top and bottom of it. The linear frame, as seen here, may consist of a single-sided unit. Here, the sails will be at different distances from the single-sided unit. 
but they are situated on the same side of the frame.